welcome to this edition of the link this evening and uh, this week we are talking about clearing and forwarding how do you know a genuine or fake clearing and forwarding agent and also there are new guidelines by Uganda Revenue Authority on people who transport small cargo combined in uh, containers what should you know as you go on doing this from today onwards that's all coming up in a moment. Welcome back, and my guest is uh, Emma Santos, and he works with Attack of Freight Services. It's a clearing agent, agency firm. Um, Emma, let's start with the, the consolidated cargo. These are people who import uh, sets of things, but because they cannot just put those things, there are few things in a, in a container. They share it with others. You are here as new procedures on how to do this business. And there are many people who business, in business who uh, bring in stuff in this way. What are some of the things that people should know now concerning these procedures? Uh, thank you, Sam, and uh, good evening, viewers. I don't speak for you, RA, but as a customs agent, um, we are mandated to advise. Mm -hmm our clients, the importers. So maybe I can have a few things here, here and there to say. First of all, as you have rightly put, council, uh, cargo consolidation is the uh, shipping in a, a bigger movable unit. Mm. Small, small goods, in most cases belonging to different individuals. Mm. Take a size of a container. There are people who buy stuff that cannot fit into a container. Mm. Because to be able to ship a container, you should be able to uh, feed it, feel it mm. so that you have an economic sense of mm. being able to ship. So when this cargo comes into the country, we have different importers. Mm. Uh, they can be five, they can be ten, they can be even more, each of them having something there. So what should I know with this new procedure? <coughs> so... Um, um, I have read through the guidelines that have been given by the commissioner. Yeah. Uh, they are not yet into effect, but according to the guidelines, they are meant to come into effect uh, on the in the middle of this month. Mm. I just pick out a few things that are there, mm. most of which are actually good because it then helps us, the customs agents, and URA for the process of the clearance to be more transparent and faster. Okay. Uh, one of the things that the commissioner is emphasizing on, and he gets these powers from Section 247 mm -hmm. of the East African Customs Management Act, is that um, the importers need to have their details clearly given in telephone numbers, um, email addresses, physical addresses. Mm -hmm. How was it before? Before it was not a mass that uh, the respective importers need to give all this information mm. because there would be a lead uh, importer so among that those it, ones it, who... The importer was the one who took responsibility. <laughs> yes, he's the one who took responsibility mm. to know who is this, uh, each of the importers with the shipments. Now you are a wants to know who... So you are a mm. now in the new guidelines wants to know each and every mm. of the persons. Mm. The other thing they are saying is that the document should be clear and detailed enough. Importer A should specify what exactly he has and present the documents that were used for transacting to get those items. So if I am packed spare parts, mm. I must say there is uh, this for the engine, there is this for the there whatever. There are two pieces of mm. engine mm. and of this type of engine, mm. both at this cost. I also have chairs or some other stuff like mm. that. So that when it comes to verification, and evaluation, and processing of the custom documents, mm. it is an easier process. Okay. Some of these documents have also been in foreign languages, maybe Chinese. They, 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 the commissioner is now mandating that they should be, in English. there should be copies mm. translated into English mm. so that the o customs officers here are easy, easily be able to, uh, to, to, to understand and know what the documents exactly are. 
what an advantage okay, okay. you and i will collect taxes you guys your work will be easier for me who is uh, uh, doing stuff in a container uh, what what advantage do i have with the new guidelines some of them um i believe faster clearance of cargo mm. because we then expect the process to be much more faster okay However, there is also a challenge that now I see that URA would want every importer to have a tin. Mm -hmm. As opposed to where there used to be only one entry mm -hmm. made for the whole shipment in the by container. The, by the chief of the container. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now it's like if the consolidator is not going to clear the goods in, in their names mm -hmm. because they have that mandate mm -hmm. using what we call a master bill of lending, yeah. then the individual importers will have to have their own customs documents. Mm. So that would require each of them to have a team. So time for hiding is finished. <laughs> I should say it is coming Emma, to we need to end. move on because of time. Yes. Uh, we are here also to talk about clearing agents. What is your role as a clearing agent? I don't want to think that viewers know these things. I don't want to think like that. So we are going back to class a little bit. What's your role as a clearing agent in this whole customs importation issue, importation uh, process rather? Well, I think that's what the, the, the public and the nation needs to, to know very clearly. We play a very important role mm. in the importation and exportation, that mm. is in facilitation of trade. Okay. We work hand in hand with the Uganda Revenue Authority, but we actually do the, the donkey work. Mm -hmm. And I should say maybe the bigger percentage of the work. Okay, what is that work? <laughs> <laughs> now, locally we are called clearing agents. Mm. By law, we are called customs agents. Okay. We can also be called freight forwarders. Mm. We can also be called brokers. Okay. Okay. Why? Because we link the business community with the tax collecting body okay. and help facilitate documentation of uh, cargo Emma, let's through the example. process. Sorry for interrupting you. Let's, let me uh, use an example. I want to import two cards mm. from Japan. Yes. What is your role? So my role is to advise the importer mm -hmm. on the process of clearance, on the documents that he's meant to provide, mm -hmm. on the formalities, on the taxes that he's meant to pay, and maybe linking up with any other uh, government agencies that are involved in the clearance process. For example, motor vehicles, you need to go through the UNBS clearance mm. before URA mm. actually does release you. Okay. Yes. So you connect me to UNBS? I you help me with UNBS? I help you with mm. UNBS because you may not be familiar with what the process is. Okay. Important to note is that we are not there by mistake. Mm. We are there by mandate and the East African Customs Management Act, yeah. Section 145, uh -huh, allows for the licensing of customs agents. So we are there by law, established by law. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, so I come to you, you, I give you my documents, you go, coming to pay tax, do I give it to you? In the beginning, at the onset, because we have evolved through a number of processes, yes, you would need to trust me and give me uh, the cash mm. to pay, some on, to pay on your it. behalf and mm. some would run away with it. Mm. Or if you don't trust me, you would move with me physically to the bank. Mm. Now, however, we have the, the, with the customs automation process, we have developed a system whereby we can generate assessments, okay. soft copies of them and send them to the client. If they don't have access to the computer, we can print them out and physically give them to the client. If they are not comfortable giving us their money, they are free to go and pay on their own behalf mm -hmm. in the banks directly. And after based paying, on those documents. based on those documents, mm. after paying, they, they give us uh, the feedback that they have paid and then we follow up with the rest of the process. Before time runs out, they are <coughs> fake clearing agents and it has been a big issue. How do I know one and how do I avoid one? And unfortunately, this program doesn't give us enough time. But briefly, yes, just like many other sectors in the economy yeah. 
and different uh, professions. We will always have quacks, we will always have the people who are spoiling the name of the others. But one, we are licensed by the Uganda Revenue Authority okay. every year for the, the normal agents. Mm -hmm. And uh, every year we are issued with a license okay. for those who pass the test. So every ideal clearing farm uh, should have a license. So the farm has a license? Yes. From URA? From URA. Mm -hmm. And if the importer is in any doubt, they can uh, go to URA and clarify whether this particular company mm. has got a, a license too. URA has also developed a system whereby they um, give assessments for people who actually are involved in communication in the system. Mm. Those who do the actual... The individual clearing agent The individual now. clearing agent, mm. okay? Their TIN numbers are pegged to the, to, to, as a right to log in into the system. Okay. So there you are able to know the company, mm. but you can even zero down to an individual. Okay. And I think they do publish those lists after uh, the, there are some uh, tests, assessment tests that, exactly. we, that we are subjected to. Mm. However, those who have been perennially doing well and passing those assessments are, are exempted okay. because now you are a they are proven themselves. knows them. Mm. They, there is also associations. Mm. We also have associations. Mm. We have UCIFA, which has been the parent uh, association. Mm. However, we also have UFA. UCIFA is Uganda Clearing Industry and Forwarding Association. Mm -hmm. UFA is Uganda Freight Forwarders Association. Mm. Then we also have FUCAF, Federation of Uganda uh, Clearing Agents and Freight Forwarders. Okay. So, in case of any doubt, we can go the to members of the public can go to these associations, okay. their respective headquarters, and, and clarify. Emma, uh, in one minute, if I don't ask this question, it's unfair. Mm -hmm. There are students there watching and they're wondering, how does one become a clearing agent? Do I need to be to study procurement or what? You can study any staff, mm. but when you come, we will then subject you to learning our technical issues. Mm, I sit exams again. You don't sit exams mm. immediately, but you have got to be sat down and taken through the theory. Mm. Logistics industry is big. Unfortunately, we have been uh, running informally for yeah. a big while, but now... We have 30 seconds. Mm. Now we, we, we are getting professional. We have a six-month course, mm. which is being run by the associations that takes you through the nitty gritty. But even after you've done that course, you need to be oriented on job, mm -hmm. at least for a year. So about six months and one and a half years, I'll be playing agent. <laughs> Emma, uh, so that means um, if you are a doctor, whatever, and you want playing agents, Emma, she has just said six months and one year, one and a half years, and you'll be playing agent. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope we did educate you a little bit, especially on the procedures on consolidated carbon in new ones, but also on the, uh, on the profession of clearing agents. Thank you very much for joining us. That was the link.